Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do a makeup tutorial. I also want to talk to you guys kind of a little bit about myself, my plans for this year, and stuff like that. So I'm going to try my best to like name all the products that I'm using. If I don't get to one, if I skip one, I will um, put it down below. So just make sure that you're, you know, keeping track with what I'm using. I'll definitely show you guys if anything. Um, but if I get carried away in conversation, I'll just apologize in advance. Um, I have a couple of new products I want to test today too. So this is going to be like a combination video of me talking to you. Sit down, get ready with me, do your makeup with me. Let's go. Um, the first thing that I'm trying that is new that I think you've probably all seen at some point by now is the Nivea Men's Cooling Post Shave Balm. It looks like this. Um, Nikki Tutorials, I think, is like one of the first people that really got everybody on this. Um, it's supposed to be a really good primer. And this was $6.99 at the Walgreens where I live. Um, but I've seen it online for like, I think somewhere between $5 and $6. So if this ends up working for me, I'm going to be like... I won't go, I won't use anything else because $6 next to a $30 primer, if this is working just as well, then what's the point, you know? So I am going to give this a try today. I have not used it under my makeup yet, so this will be kind of a first impression type deal. Um, so I hope it works. I just use like this much. Okay, it definitely smells like a dude. Hopefully my makeup will cover up that smell. Not that I don't like it, it's just like strong. Okay, and before I start talking about more things um, about me, <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys the new foundation that I got too. This is the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. Um, I saw this on Shan XO's YouTube channel, I believe, and I was intrigued, so I bought some. I got it in the, sh the shade in between kind of what I am on my neck and my face, which is different because I self-tanned, um, and I'm going to be mixing it. This you can use by itself. Um, you can mix it with a primer, a moisturizer, another foundation, um, but it's supposed to be maximum coverage um, depending on how much you use, obviously. If you use one drop, it's going to be sheer. If you use two, it's going to be medium. Three will be cov like full coverage, and then anything after three is going to be like flawless and like complete coverage. So, oh, and by the way, can we not judge my uh, terrible self-tanning job that I did on my hands? It's harder than it looks. So I'm going to be using it with my NARS, what is this? I can never remember. All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation. I'm going to be using it um, together. This one is more of the shade of my neck, and this is more of the shade of my face. So I'm just going to mix them, and it's going to make a custom color. I have been using just some kind of flat surface to mix it on. So I'm just going to take this because it's flat, and I'm going to obviously shake, shake, shake gonna take my um, foundation in my darker color and just kind of okay yeah, I'm running out I forgot okay and we're gonna do like that much and then I'm gonna take the drops and you do have to shake these because they're like they separate it'll be like oily and weird and clumpy if you don't shake it take the dropper and I'm gonna do three one two Three. And then I'm just going to take my finger and just mix it. Make a little foundation cocktail. And I'm going to dot it all over my face, just like I usually do. And I still have a lot of product left on the box to use if I need to. I'm going to take my Sigma Flat Kabuki brush, this is the F80, and pat it into my face. So um, one big thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that in April I will be attending IMATS New York. I am so excited that I get to go to this. I've never been to IMATS before, so if you guys have been, please let me know how you like it down below. <laughs> I've never been to New York, I'm going to be going there for the first time. Um, my best friend Molly is going with me. She lives in New York. I have yet to visit her on her own turf yet, so I'm really excited to go see her. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm gonna go, you know, do some networking, obviously shopping. Um, for those of you who don't know what IMATS is, 
is the International Makeup Artist Trade Show. And basically it's like the vendors from makeup brands coming and promoting and selling their products for like probably 20 to 50% off. So obviously, duh, I'm going. <laughs> Who doesn't want to go out of state to go shopping, am I right? And New York of all places. So I'm going for that reason. I'm going to, you know, kind of get my YouTube name out there because this is something that I want to do. Um, you know, for the long run, I really enjoy it. Some people don't feel comfortable in front of the camera and I can totally tell why. I mean, it's intimidating to know that there's people out there watching you that you have no idea who they are. And you're like, oh my God, what if I say the wrong thing? What if they think that I sound dumb? You just have to get past it. I mean, honestly, just be yourself because at the end of the day, if you're putting on some kind of facade on the camera and then you meet your fans, well, subscribers, fans, whatever, in person, not saying I don't have I don't have a ton of subscribers, but in the future, if I ever did, if you're going to go meet them, you don't want to be this totally different person than you are on camera. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so I'm really, really, really excited about that. It's going to be a big deal for me to go. Um, and I'm gonna, I plan on filming the whole time I'm there, kind of making like a vlog, like a follow me around type deal, um, and let you guys in on IMATS and New York and how everything is there, how I like it, and yeah, I'm just really excited about that. Um, so I thought I'd share with you guys. I think I've been putting foundation on my face for a little too long now. So I'm gonna move on to concealer. Of course, I'm using my Naked Skin Concealer by Urban Decay in the shade Fair Neutral. And I'm going to put it under my eyes like that. And I'm gonna put here, cause you wanna make sure that you're evening out everything on your face. You don't want white under your eyes only. So we knew our little tribal markations. I'm taking a damp beauty blender and I'm just gonna blend it all out. I actually am gonna bake today too. Um, I got the I got the Laura Mercier loose setting powder because apparently it's like everybody's holy grail for baking and I have yet to bake with it so I'm gonna try that out too. Just all kind of new stuff happening, all kinds. And yeah, I am a little bit sick. If that's disgusting, you could probably hear me going, "That's gross." But um, I was really sick this past week with a cold. Went to the doctor. He gave me some antibiotics and it literally like knocked that cold out of the park like the next day I was a hundred times better so take care of yourself just do it because last time I got sick I didn't go to the doctor and I was literally miserable for like a whole week this time it was only like two days take care of yourself so I am taking my Laura Mercier setting powder and it's literally stark white and it's a loose powder so I'm gonna take my beauty blender again like this, it's damp. You want it to be damp so that the powder has something to hold on to. And I'm gonna get it on here like this. And go under my eyes with it like this. Sorry, it's hard to talk when I'm doing this. And this is going to brighten up my eye area drastically where I just highlighted with concealer and it's gonna set it so that my concealer doesn't move all day so we're only gonna look crazy for a little while I don't know if it would work better with one of those like generic triangular sponges this is kind of big so it's kind of hard to like get the powder maybe if I do like this Good idea, Megan. Oh yeah. Okay, so definitely do that. <laughs> definitely dump some in the lid because otherwise it's really hard to get out. And I'm gonna do some here where we highlighted. And here. And now we're just gonna wait. I usually like to leave this powder on for like I don't know, five to 10 minutes. Some people leave it on for 30. It just depends on what your preference is. I mean, if you leave this sucker on for like an hour, you're gonna have stark white under eyes. And that's not that cute, to be honest. So I'm just gonna leave it on for like five, 10 minutes. I'm trying to convince my little sister to trade rooms with me because right now I share with my twin sister. 
And I can only film in Jessie's room, which is my little sister, because she has her own room. And the lighting is perfect, obviously. I mean, look at that. Of course, I'm going to use Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade. And I'm going to use this doll face brush. It's just a angled <laughs> eyebrow brush. So first I'm just gonna take this and brush through my eyebrows. I'm gonna brush them like upwards. Only thing about natural light is you really see when it's time to pluck your eyebrows. Like right now is probably a good time for me, but we're just gonna keep going. Brush it upwards. And then I'm going to take this and with this you need to use a light hand because it does come on with it comes on off the brush very heavily so don't get too much product and don't press too hard on your eyebrows when you're using it so something else that I wanted to tell you guys is I am partnering very soon with a beauty website um, and I'll be able to talk more about it probably next week um, once everything is set in stone. But um, yeah, it's just a cool little opportunity for me that I didn't really want to turn down. It's just something maybe to get my name out there. And the um, CEO sounds, you know, really cool, really nice. So I'm excited to try it out. Um, and yeah, I will be able to talk more about it next week. Hopefully his the website will be finished and um, we'll get to talk about it more a little bit more openly. But yeah, I wanted to let you guys know about that too because it's just exciting. And I want you guys to support him and me as well if that's something that you're interested in. So I went a little, <laughs> went a little bold on the brows, but that's okay, it's cool. I'm gonna work with it. And once I'm done with that, I just like to take my brush that I originally combed my eyebrows with and do it again just to blend everything you know that might be a little bit choppy right here and just kind of brush it and blend it and I saw an inspiration pic that Samantha posted from Beta Lash Beauty on her Instagram and she used um like mustard tone eyeshadow and I was like oh my god that looks so good on her I don't know if it's gonna look good on me but I tried it yesterday and I loved the look of it so that's what I'm gonna do with you guys today um it's kind of tricky to work with mustard tones just because sometimes it can make you look like your eye it can make you look sick like if you've ever seen somebody that's like got a really bad cold and their eyes have really bad bags is that yellow low tone you want to stay away from that and I'll show you guys how to do that it, this personally works for me um, I don't know for other skin tones if it will make you look washed out or make you look sick but this personally is what works for me um, before I start on my eyes I'm gonna finish my face I'm gonna go ahead and dust off the baking powder that we just used and I'm just using the Morphe M438 um, to do that this is what I generally use to set my um, concealer anyways so I'm just going to dust it off like this. And yeah, that, that makes a big difference. I really like this powder. It totally makes it like flawless underneath your eyes. Like I don't feel like I don't feel like my found or my concealer is gonna move all day. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush and just dust the loose powder all over my face um, to give us a nice smooth base to contour on. So I'm going to use my NARS Eda brush and go in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills contour kit. Um, clearly, this was my favorite color. I think it was called Fawn. Um, but yeah, I ran out of that completely. It's literally gone. Um, so I'm going to use this color right here and mix it with a little bit of this just because the orange base one looks a little better with my fake tan. So I'm going to just use a little bit of that. And this one is just more of a natural, like a cooler tone. So I'm just going to mix the cool tone with... The warm tone I guess this one's probably more neutral either way this is the two that I'm mixing so I'm going to start back here where the hollows of my cheeks are and work the rest of the product up forward and then I like to push it up like this to make sure that it all blends
And I personally don't like to bring my contour up too far because I have a baby face, so I already have cheeks. And if you bring it up and cup right here, like some sometimes you see like models or somebody doing that. Um, if you do that, it's gonna make your face look even rounder. So I like to keep mine towards the back. Then I'm also taking those two colors and I'm going to put it, put it up here on my forehead to even everything out. And if you have a smaller forehead, I suggest you keep the bronzer closer to the hairline um, because otherwise it's going to make your forehead look even smaller. Um, if you have a larger forehead, then go ahead and bring it down towards your eyebrows um, and it's gonna give the illusion that you have a smaller forehead. Mine is probably just right in between, big and small. So I just, I just kind of work with that. <laughs> And I just bring it about here, right above my eyebrows, and then blend back upwards. I also like to take it and go under my chin. And this is going to give our face the illusion of it being a little bit skinnier and eliminate the double chin. And just for the heck of it, I like the shape of my nose, but I like to also make it look a little more structured. So I'm taking a little bit and running it down the bridge of my nose, well, the side of the bridge of my nose, like that. And it's gonna cast a little shadow, just make it look like a little bit more structured, a little nicer, like I didn't forget about it. And underneath. Just be really careful when you do this because you don't want it to look really muddy. Now that we are finished with contouring, I'm just going to add a little bit of blush. This is um, a Makeup Geek blush, I believe, and Spellbound, that's the name of it. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this and keep it towards the back of my cheeks. Put it right on top of that contour we just did, just for a little bit of color. And for my highlight shade, what am I going to use? I have so many highlights. It's my slight obsession. How about I use the first one that I grab? Of course. This is, this is the one I've been using in like the last 15 of my tutorials. But fate is fate. And I'm going to use it again. So I'm just going to use it on this, um, F, I mean, this E40 blending brush um, that looks like this just going to dust it let's be real I'm just gonna cake it all on my cheekbones because I like highlight and just douse myself in this for about an hour and I will be satisfied this video is probably gonna be really long but stick with me cuz <laughs> You guys follow me for a reason, so may as well just listen to my life and my rambling. So now that I have my highlight on, I'm going to go ahead and move to my eyes. That took way longer than I wanted it to, but spirit fingers. I'm going to start by um, priming my eyelids. So I'm using my MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. This is my favorite eye primer. Um, this is my go-to, so it's the same color as my skin tone. So that's what we're using, and I do like to put it under my eye as well because my eyeshadow that I put under there tends to be the first part of my eyeshadow that comes off throughout the day, and this makes a huge difference if you just put a little bit under there. Gives the eyeshadow something you hold on to all day. All right, if you hear anyone talking, it's my brother playing video games and he's yelling at his TV. That's gonna be one downside if I do move into this room. Um, almost all the colors I'm using is from my Morphe 350 palette. I think there's gonna be one shade that I'm using not, that's not from this. Um, so first I'm just gonna use a um, transition color that's close to my skin tone. So I'm gonna choose this one. You wanna just keep your big fluffy brush in circular motions to make sure that everything is blended out very smoothly because nobody likes a choppy eyeshadow blending job. And that's just the real truth. It's very important to use 
transition colors because if you don't, you're going to go in with a dark color on your crease and it's just going to be really choppy. And the transition color matches your skin and it easily lets you blend in the next darkest color without it being like streaky and like weird looking so it's it's really it's really an important step to me personally but maybe you guys can do it better than me I don't know so the next color that I'm using is one that um is pretty similar to the one I was telling you about in Samantha's Instagram post it is this mustardy color right here it's like a camel slash mustard color and I'm just gonna get that all over this Morphe brush. I don't even remember the name of it. It's just a Morphe blending brush. Um, and I'm going to start working this in the crease. And then next we're going to build a little bit more depth so that we don't just have this one color. I really want to blow it out to be honest. Like I want it to be, I want this yellow mustard color to be the majority of the color on my eye. Um, so I really wanna just make it darker up closer, up higher than I normally would. Just kind of up here, I don't know why, I just really like it. Be crazy with it. That's enough. So the next color I'm gonna use is the one that I'm not using from, <clears throat> from the 350 palette. This is a Makeup Geek eyeshadow as well in the shade Cocoa Bear and I love this eyeshadow. It's like a very earthy red tone. Um, it's more of like an orange red so I'm going to use that um, kind of to build some depth in our crease um, and I'm going to focus this a lot closer to my crease um, like I said I was going to do with the other color that I just used except for I'm actually going to do it this time. So I'm just going to keep it right about here and just create a nice little transition because I'm going to be putting a dark brown color on my eyelid. So I'm going to just make this smoky. Just like that. I don't know why the light is catching this eye a little bit choppier than this eye, but it's actually blended. And then I'm going to go back with my fluffy brush and blend all of that together for the most seamless of looks. It's very easy to wash your face out with these colors that I'm using. That's why before I'm finished, I'm going to have a crackhead stage. <laughs> okay, yeah, the light's just making this one look choppy. I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. So for my lid color, I am going to take a flat shader brush by Sigma, and I'm going to pick up this really dark brown right here um, and pack that on my eyelid. I think the color that Sam used in her picture was a shimmery shadow. I really couldn't tell. I was really trying to look really hard for it, but I just decided that I wanted to make this more of a smoky eye look, so I'm going to do a dark matte brown, and I'm just going to start packing that on my eyelid. And you want to use a light hand because matte eyeshadows tend to give a lot of fallout when you're packing it, so you don't want to like pack it like that. Just be light handed, and it will go on for you. The makeup loves you. And once it looks really choppy like that, I'm going to take this brush that I used for the Cocoa Bear shade and go ahead and blend all of this together. And then I'm going to take the bigger fluffy brush with no product on it and go ahead and give it one more blend together. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of that mustard shade on there just for the hell of it. Okay, and then it should look something like that when you're done. Now we're going to move to under the eye. I'm going to just take this pencil brush right here. I am going to start with the lighter color. So I'm taking the mustard color once again, this one right here. And I'm going to dust that all under my eye. And I am going to bring it pretty far down. Okay, so my camera ran out of storage, so I'm just going to say this really fast. Um, I My camera stopped recording after I was putting the yellow underneath my eye. So after that, I just took the Cocoa Bear shade, which is this shade 
And I also put that under my eye and I added a black eyeliner and smoked that out. I am just going to apply some eyelashes now. These are the Lily Lashes in the style London and these are gonna be the ones I'm putting on my face. So I'm gonna just apply that off camera and I will be back to put my lipstick on in just a minute. Okay, now that I have my lashes on, I'm just going to take this color by Model Co. And what is the shade? I think it's only one shade. It's called the Illusion Lip Liner. And line my lips with that. And I'm gonna put the um, Meet Matte Hues by The Balm in the shade Committed um, over top of that. Okay, this is the completed look, and you could definitely do a dark lip if you wanted to. It would, abs it would absolutely look stunning with this, um, like a dark maroon color. But this is, um, I'm doing something during the day, so I'm just going to keep it a little bit lighter. Um, but yeah, this is the final look. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And yeah.